great honor to be here today. Um, standing on the existing protocol and thanking Olashua International School. I remember when she called, she, I, I said, I don't know about May 31st, I will not be able to make it. She said, I'm going to fast and I'm going to pray. I will cast, I will bind, I will make sure nothing stops you from coming. So, you know when you hear that as a mother, as a parent, and of course, knowing the reason why Mental Awareness Initiative was set up, against all odds, you will also fast, pray, bind, and ensure that you make it. So that is the problem. So I'm very proud to be here. I'm really very grateful because this is an aspect of our health that we hardly like to talk about. And when we see key partners trying to help us to drive through the message and helping us to reduce stigma attached to the only with mental illnesses, I say it and I will keep saying it again. Collaboration is a new competition, so I'm very happy that Mental Awareness Initiative has started in Godashi International School. Thank you very much. I remember some years ago when I went to give um, a mental health awareness talk to a secondary school and three weeks after, they sent me a 13 year old girl who was rushed to our facility and I was wondering the reason you know, why they called very early, like, almost like um, around 7.30 am, but I, I thought I missed the call, the, the call and later on they used an ambulance to bring the girl. What was the reason for that? The teacher, so teachers in this forum, please give yourself a round of applause. We are all teachers as parents, but you know teachers, they go extra mile to see certain things happen and they try to help. So after that lecture we gave in that school, there was this particular teacher who noticed the girl that was in her class in previous session has started deteriorating in her academics. Despite the fact that the girl was no longer in her class. So she followed up with the case. And that beautiful day, I'll call it a beautiful day because we are all alive now and well. She found the girl in the restroom in their school going to take her life. And then she said, I knew there was something wrong. And then she knelt down, begged the girl and said, please tell me what it is. She said, no. Holidays in two weeks' time, I don't want to go home. I don't want to go home and face all the problems I've been facing there because it's worse during the holiday. And she said, what is worse during the holiday? And that is how the story started. This is a 13-year-old, and of course we all know how our teenagers do look these days. Big, no way developed. In her house, under the roof of her dad and mom, they have a driver, they have a cook, they have two younger brothers, one um, the younger brother to the mother and one the younger brother to the uh, father. So two uncles, Patsana and Matsana, then a driver, a cook. These men take turns in sleeping with this girl every day she comes back from school. So automatically, she wasn't doing her homework, she wasn't doing well academically anymore, and so her grades were dropping. And this girl had had an abortion, courtesy of this man. Meanwhile, the mom doesn't know her daughter has not started menstruating. So when this teacher found out and said, why don't you want to go home on holiday? She said, it's worse on holiday because I'm always home. School has always been a hiding place for me. So because when I come home by four, there's a limited time because they know that that and mom will be home the next day So during the holiday, they do whatever they want to do to me. And they always tell me not to tell my mom and dad because they're going to kill them. And so this girl never told anyone. So that money we called the mom and she kept cutting the call. She's an executive in a top organization. And I told the teacher, give me the phone, I know what to do. So I sent her a message, good morning, madam, I trust you are doing good. 
call me now, your daughter is dead. And she called. I said, your daughter is not dead, but she has been that day. I need you now. I'm so, 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 so. I said, she left that very important meeting and came. And she cried and shouted and said she was going to resign her job and do this and do that. I said, no, you can't get depressed or not because we need you to be able to manage this girl. So we have to put this girl out of school for one good year to rehabilitate her. And the father, to date, as I stand here speaking to you, is still carrying a gun looking for this men to kill. But they are nowhere to be found. This girl's life may be damaged, but we try to see how much we can get her reintegrated into the society. And that's because it was just a period of between six to nine months this happened. For some children out there, it has been happening to them for years and they've not been able to find their voice to speak. So that's one of the so many other reasons why we are here today. To be able to break the silence, to be able to reduce stigma attached to mental illnesses, including the people that have these uh, patients. In as much as we want to be able to understand our holistic wellness, Mental health is one aspect that is very, very important. Oftentimes, when we hear mental health, we always assume there is that man on the street. Please, it's good for us to understand that there's a distinction between mental health and mental illness. We all have mental health as we sit in here today, but we do not all have mental illness. Studies have actually shown that one out of every four Nigerians will have a mental illness in their lifetime. And the beautiful definition by World Health Organization on mental health is that it's a complete state of well-being whereby each and every one of us here is number one, has the ability to realize his or her potentials. Second, the ability to deal with the day-to-day -day hazards of life. Third, the ability to work productively and fruitfully. Last but not the least, ability to give back to society. So what the National International School is doing today is an ability to give back to the society. <laughs> so you see, mental health is all part of our health. Sometimes, or in fact, even most times, it's more important than our physical health. But today, we don't want to dwell into the mental health of everyone, of adults. We are talking about the mental health of our children, the magnitude of the problem. Worldwide, up to 10 to 20 percent of our children do suffer from mental illnesses. In fact, it has been said that before the age of 14, half of most mental illnesses resonate, and to talk before they reach the age of 25. So you can imagine when you see a 25, 28, 30 year old, it might have not started before the child was 14, because half of most mental illnesses start before the age of 40. So most mental illnesses are insidious in onset. Our children are our future. The reason why we are here today is because we also want as much as possible to have healthy children for a safe society. But we need to understand that if we do not take part in intentionally preventing them, being there for them, making them trust us, we trust them, listen to them, we aren't going to get anything to learn from them. You will suffer, run around, create a career for yourself, be good to yourself, but at your own age, what do you look back to to tell yourself, yes, I've been able to achieve this, 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 this. But when it comes to my children, it's zero per hundred. We do not want to be in that platform. We all want to see our children who do better than us. So the mental health of our children is very, very important and of course is topmost on our list. The watch what I want us to look at today is a change. What has changed in your child for you to know that there's a problem? Like our dean said, certain things children do, we assume is part of growing up. Yes, it's part of growing up. Get angry easily, throw tantrums, 
begin to have changes in appetite, mood, especially for our young girls with this era of body shaming. Everybody wants to look like passions, you know, gray lean and thinning out and drinking shakes and smoothies and doing water therapy. Some have begun to start having what we call eating disorder, which is not common among Africans or African Americans. They are common among the for patients, but we are beginning to see that today because the body shaming has come into place and is telling that young girl, you are too fat. There's so much bullying in our school to the extent that children get so bullied, they don't even want to go to school. So you see your child wake up in the morning and tell you, Mommy, I don't want to go to school today. And if you do not take time to sit with that child and know exactly the reason or reasons why he or she does not want to go to school, you may be losing a child that you do not understand. I quite understand that we do want to excel, do very well in our career, be that top uh, manager, MD, but it's good. But the sad part is that the busy parent syndrome has come to stay. And the busy parent syndrome has eroded into the society to the extent that some of us will never know when their children wake up, when they go to bed, how they do their lessons, who takes care of them, that is that they have, they are spending money. So to them, the child is taken care of. No. That is not taken care of. That is supervised. You are just there thinking that your child is going up. But sometimes you would, your child will pick up a bad behavior and you don't even know the reason how or he got into that. We are also in the era of transgender, gay, lesbians. You wouldn't know if your child has not crossed the line until there's a, a crisis. We are so reactionary that it's only when problems come up, we begin to run around and tell ourselves, no, we have to quickly solve this situation. But we are here today to remind us. I'm not going to say remind you, it's us. We are all in it together. Remind us that we have to go back to the family system and intentionally prevent our children to be the best that we, are, we want them to be and to unleash their potential. You know why one thing I don't like about people that dresses, they expect you to have this, but I love to speak from my heart. Because this is what I do on a day-to-day -day basis. This is these are, the, these are things I see. It got to, it, to an extent, I would keep referring back to the dean, because I also have a teenager, and I'm looking at some of the things she does. She's home on holiday, she loves the dog, in my own house. <laughs> and I want to call her, and she said, no, the dean, I'm busy, and what, what are you doing inside? And then my mind, as a psychiatrist, was there. Hey, why did she lock her door? And I'm banging the door open. And come out. It got to an extent they have to change it up, the key to the door. No more longing. If your instinct tells you certain things, do it. I deliberately change the key to that door so that she won't have any room to tell me that the door is locked and I can't go in. Rather, I still know that she needs room. So if I still want to go to her room, I will tap and say, Can I come in? But not lock the door and wait five minutes before you open the door. I don't want to know what you're doing, but you are right under my roof and I'm intentionally parenting you and you have no excuse to tell me that you are locking the door and you are coming to no. Because you are always in your gadget. The social media has taken over. Pornography. Virtual friends that they don't even know. Who is telling them that because they are black, that their parents are too strict, that their parents are of those ages, that they can't do them anything, that they can't do X, Y, Z for them. So they should find a way to get out of the house or do this or do that. Who do you as a parent as you're sitting down here know who your child's friends really are? Who they are? Who are these friends' parents? Where do they live? What interaction do you have with that child, those children and their parents? All these play a very important role in the well-being and the upbringing of our children. And we cannot take it away. 
Because if they ask me a question, you don't give them the answer. They will go out there and go and look for somebody who will give them an answer that may be detrimental. You can't tell your child, stop watching this video, Nigerian videos. They are always doing witchcraft then. She's going to find out what is witchcraft all about. Stop watching these musicals. The girls are always naked. And that is exactly what she wants. Won't you tell her the reason why this music has So you must be able to give her these right answers. Even if you don't know, tell her, let us Google it together. It shows that you are there. So as you go out there, get those answers, come back and it becomes a major problem for them. So oftentimes we get to hear things like this. Okay, what are these symptoms that these children can have? And then we should be worried. Mental health in children in, in adults is completely different from children. But of course, when they become teenagers and young adults, they are almost as similar as the adulthood. But like I said earlier on, what is that change? Because when they are dealing with changes, maybe that they've changed school, they've changed friends, they've you know, you've moved accommodation. So they find it difficult to adjust. Why some will find it very easy to adjust to the situation? Some of them find it difficult to adjust. So some of these symptoms that are well noted when it comes to mental, um, uh, mental uh, health in children are changing eating habits. As the child stops eating well or the child is now overeating, as the child started sleeping too much or is never sleeping at all, as the mood changed, what has changed? Is the child now more will drop to herself or herself than before? Sometimes it may never be the withdrawal, it may be the complete opposite. They become very angry, they start doing things completely different from the norm that you know this child can do. They start throwing tantrum, they can get so angry to the essence, they start smashing things up. Even some of them become very rude. They stand up to you and tell you to your face, don't talk to me. Who I'm 20, 20 years old now, I'm 16, mommy, I'm old enough, you cannot tell me this, you can't tell me that. So we need to understand that when these changes occur, you shouldn't be alarmed immediately. It may not be the changes you see as a group, but the reason why you should be alarmed is that if it's not increasing in frequency, if these changes have started affecting the day-to-day -day life living of this child, including their own family. Because if it started, if it started affecting you, obviously there's a problem somewhere. And of course, don't forget the academic performance. Most times that is where you get to see the major change. This child is to come first 10 or first 5, top 5 or top 3, all of a sudden it's coming 24 out of 25. Is it that the school, there's a problem there? Is it that they're no longer teaching them well? Or is it that the child can no longer get what, you know, is no longer focusing on class? And that's not the time to start blaming the school. That is what we call parent-teachers association. That's the time for you to go find out why is this child behaving the way he or she is behaving and why is the academic performance not dropping. You must be able to leave it in the and find out the reason why there's a problem. So change is the most important thing that we should look at. The emotional well-being of every child is very paramount. In as much as we understand that their physical health is, but the emotional well-being is something that we definitely need to understand and how we put it on board. June 2013, I remember this one very clearly because it's a month in my facility that we definitely would not want to forget in the world. From June 2nd to June 13th, 2013, we saw six teenagers between the ages of 12 to 16. And these six teenagers came down with depression after we made the diagnosis. Four had attempted suicide and two had attempted suicide twice. And you can imagine the reasons why some of them were having depression. One particular young girl, 13 years of age, she knew her parents had money, but the parents did not see any reason why they should give her an iPhone. So they gave her the normal phone. You can call us, we can call you, it's not a smartphone, but our friends. 
So we are going to the risk. Who are those at risk of having mental illnesses? The peer pressure. How can your parents give you this? They say, what they use? Balasa. Well, thank you. Why would your parents give you this balasa form? You can get an iPhone. So the pressure was so much on this girl that she kept going back. She couldn't be to that direct, but she kept going back to the mom. I need a new phone. This is not the phone my friends are using. My friends are teasing. And the mother didn't say any reason why she should be bothered about that. It's your phone. Use it. There's nothing we can do about it. But because that girl was already predisposed, that became a trigger because of that pressure. And what was the predisposition we are already talking about? She was from a divorced family living only with the mom, that had married and located out of town. So the mother was always trying to compensate for the fact that she's the father and mother. So anything she, she wants, she wants to give. But at this point, the mother said, look, I do not want to give you an iPhone, a smartphone, because I know the implication. So the mother understood to that, but the mother didn't understand. And she was looking for all ways. So her predisposition, and now a trigger with peer pressure, now she couldn't belong to these girls anymore. They were always sidelining her, they were always touting her, they were always using abusive words on her. This girl now attempting to kill herself. The second case, she didn't attempt to kill herself, she attempted to kill the whole family. The chef had just made a freshly made like opera soup. We, we all know how opera soup is. This girl carried hypochic, and poured it inside. But the chair saw her and then uh, told the parents, and that was how they got to know. So these parents were going to take this food with her, and they just think that it was just a change in the taste of the food. And then this guy told me, Dr. Kabi, I don't know why you are examining me. The truth is that I intended to keep everybody and the case closed. No remorse. So how she thought the parents were too strict. So what is your parenting style that is affecting your child? Are you the authoritarian parent? Are you the authoritative parent? Are you the, the indulgent parent or the negligent parent? We need to understand that our parenting style also in a way adversely affects the upbringing of the child and can also affect the mental health of that child. The best among this one is the authoritative. When we discuss with your child, you, you are part of your child's life. You can't be authoritarian with the, with the current day and age of, every, of how our children are growing now. You want them prima papa, they can't tell you no, they must be very obedient, they must do whatever. No, they are going to have that low self-esteem. It's going to affect their interaction with other people. They are going to shy away from certain other things. But when you are part of their upbringing, they are being authoritative, do this, you know, indulge them when you think it's necessary, give them that reward when you know it is right, they become more healthy and they grow up to become healthy children and of course emotionally more stable. So coming from your coming from a divorce home is one problem that is, is something that we need to look into. Yeah. It's something that we definitely need to look into. Oscar, do you write anything here? You know, when your sister's coming, you know so that your time is almost up. So we need to understand that. So I will quickly run through some of the symptoms so that we can grab them very fast. So some of the symptoms in children vary depending on the type of mental illness, like I said earlier on. Inability to cope with the daily problems and activities. Changes in the sleeping and eating pattern, like I said. Assessing complaints of physical ailment. Defying authority, skipping school, stealing or even damaging property. Some of them get to the extent of, you know, abusing drugs. I think we are not going to dwell into drug abuse, but we understand the gravity and the magnitude of drug abuse currently we are dealing with amongst our youth these days. They are found diverse ways, different methodology, different proportion. Imagine a child or a youth mixing ventilated spirit with cola drink as a stimulant. It's alarming because you understand, even if you are not a doctor, 
what ventilator spirit is. There is, is that one that you use in cleaning wood? So I'm not talking about something different. So we are not having numerous ways. Stop sleeping the toilet, stop taking this out door, all manner of things. Where things are that, that are going on now and in the name of substance issues. But how is mental illness in children diagnosed? Like I said earlier on, it's not like as in the adults, you must know about how these symptoms have changed and how it's affecting the child. Of course, look at how often it's occurring, the long, how long it lasts when it occurs. And of course, at the unusual age, is it coming now? Yesterday, I asked one of my colleagues in our platform the percentage of statistics when it comes to mental health in children. And one of the results that was somewhere in the southwest here, and one of the results is that depression, because depression in adolescent, and they found out that it was more among those that were living in the upper area than in the rural area. It was more among those that were in the monogamous family than in the polygamous family. It was more among those that came from divorce family setting than when they are with that and mom. Somehow, Harvard John Hopkins University did a 30 year um, survey or project. And I wanted to find out if there was one single factor that is linked with mental illness, suicide, malignant tumor, um, hypertension, and coronary heart disease. I'm sure the answer will shock everyone here. What they found out. So they put, they got about 1,277 participants in this 30-year project. And at the end of the day, they found out that the single factor that links these five illnesses is closeness to a parent. And who is that? The father. A 30 year project. So you now understand the impact and the role our parents play in the life of these children. Now they are talking about the father. We live in a society where anything goes wrong with the child, we are calling the mother. The schools are the uh, where is the mother? Anything goes wrong with the child, we all call the mother. Now we are now understanding that the role of the father in this 30 year project was very key. That linked up these five illnesses in one. The factor they were able to find that was significant. So please, the role of father, the role of mother, they are important in the upbringing for any child anywhere in the world. Some of the mental illnesses that we find in children, anxiety, depression, drug abuse, the child developmental illnesses like the autism, attention deficit, hyperactive like disorder, that is one childhood disorder that needs children in school. So you see the child is in school, he's, he's talking, he's psychotic, so it's assumed that the child is just a child, so this, this hyperactivity will reduce. So these children are just there, moving from one class to the other. They are not really functioning well and being the best that they seem to be. They are not as productive as they used to be, that they are supposed to be. And academically, they are not as sound. But because the child doesn't have all those other symptoms, like the child is not talking, or the child is not having a, a seizure, so it's just fine. It's just a child. You see, if you have a child that has an attention deficit or an active disorder, you see them jumping, moving from one place to another. But most times, the parents are always like, no, it's a child, you are growing, it's fine. But no, there's adult attention deficit and magic disorder, untreated. We have some adults that behave that way. But because an adult, they are going to just assume that it's an adult now, it's big enough, whatever it is, you can take care of it. So please, there are things on how we can help our children and young adults become mentally healthy. I will quickly run through these tips and go through our treatment modalities and round up so that we will be able to have our panel discussion and ask the questions that we need to. Because I know a lot of us have burning questions that we want to ask. And I like the fact that Oscar said, please feel free to express yourself. Don't the, the reason why you took time out of your very busy schedule to be with us today shouldn't be for you to close your mouth. 
for you to ask, you ask those burning questions that you think that are very important, that you want answers for, the misconceptions, the, you need clarity for certain things and want to know why is this happening and why is that happening. It's good for you to say, I know one child, no problem, don't lose your child, it's okay. It's good for you to say, my neighbor's child, don't worry, even if it's your child, they understand. But ask those questions so that you can get clarity. So when you get to, you put those things in place that will help you get your child on the right track. So some of the things you can have your, your children help to make them mentally healthy is that you should be, the, the children should be in good physical health as much as of course their mental health. They should be able to exercise, have time and freedom to play indoors and outdoors. So for those of us that have children, I want us to quickly go over five things before we move to the next session. 95210. 95210 just means that your child needs at least minimum of seven to nine hours of sleep. Five means that your child, the food he or she is eating should have the five components of you know, the classes of food. Protein, carbohydrate, fat and oil. It should say integrated medicine has come to stay. Medication. No. Sometimes the change in diet will change everything. Exercise will release those happy hormones called endorphins and is a good treatment modality for mild depression. Does not necessarily have to be a medication blue, yellow, green pill. Changing the, the environment where a child has been abused has also been you know, be helpful. So nine five, so the five classes of food. So leave the nutrients. I'm not going to call any particular brand. Leave the nutrients. If you see the advertisement, it has egg, it has chicken. But because we just want fast things, we just make the noodles with this with the sauce, and then the child is not happy the requisite classes of food. And the child is looking beyond the bottle. It's actually or she's actually malnourished. Two, don't let your child watch TV more than two hours a day. Television is not something that you should see as look this child is stopping you, go and watch television. No. It gets to understand that even at night the child finds it difficult to sleep. It can affect their sleep cycle. Maximum two hours a day. One. Nine, five, two, one. Most of us are guilty of this. And please let us change. We are bringing up our children. When the, the, the child doesn't know what it is to play outside, doesn't know what it is to the, interact with the neighbors, so at least per day this child should be able to play outside one hour. If you cannot make it on a daily basis, maybe every other day, let the child go outside, inhale fresh air, move around, take a walk with that child. Last but not on the least, last but not the least on this 95210 means. Please, as much as possible, reduce fizzle drinks for your child. Some days, let them take only water. Twice a week, water, thrice a week, the drinks. And then you keep alternating. That will really help. Oscar has come, and I think uh, he's trying to tell me to round up. So when it comes to treatment, so we are going to go to, straight to treatment and then I will round up. Treatment modality is that most times when the children have this symptoms we talked about, you are most likely going to go to the child's pediatrician. It's okay. They are your first point of call. You don't have a pediatrician, most times there's a general physician you will go to. Yes, it's still very okay because they are still your first line of um, call for you to go meet them and discuss with them the problems you've noticed in the child, the change you have noticed in this child. And that person, as far as it's a doctor, they are definitely going to help you refer that child to the right place. But the best treatment here is parental help. Let our solutions come start from our home. For every one of us here, we all came from homes. So it's the primary unit for each and every one of us. Let's change our parenting style. If it's not, you know, helping you. And if you as a parent do it that day, we need help. Because you cannot give what you do not have. If you are already depressed or dealing with depression, you cannot nurture your, your children to full potential. Go get help so that your children will enjoy the benefit of having a mother or benefit of having a father. If 
people who are any reason you are told that your child needs the education because if you need the right expert, for the psychiatrist that can use for to them once that my colleagues outside. If you need the education, they will tell you the reason why your child needs the education. And if they haven't told you, ask them, doctor, why do you want to give my child purple pill? And the doctor will tell you, look, your child has hyperactivity disorder. If you want to use this medication to reduce the hyperactivity, no matter the cocktail of therapy, it will not work. But they will also tell you that change diet, do this, regulate this thing, all those will work. But for any child that needs medication, do not ignore it. Run to your pastor and mom and think that that is where your help is. No, it's good to have your pastor and mom and sit with the medical. Two good health, we say, they are better than one. So as I round up today, I want all of us to guide up because as it is now, we are all going to be food soldiers in the mental advocacy, so we are going to take a pledge. Let's have a pledge. If you can't stand up, please, no problem. So, I, the winner is so bad, Pledges to help reduce stigma attached to mental health by speaking out. <laughs> to show love to people dealing with mental illnesses and their families. To spread the word and encourage help seeking behavior. To walk the talk and be mentally aware. God, I trust. Thank you very much.